Welcome back to the tent. We are here outside once again. I'm going to start calling these videos tent talks <laughs> because we always seem to end up here chatting. But today's video is going to be a list of some common mistakes that I see new campers making and more importantly, what to do about them, how to correct them. So let's dive right into the list. This first one is something that I have talked about quite a bit on this channel. The mistake is not knowing how to use your gear prior to your trip. So before you head out on a trip, you always should be confident in how to use your gear. The tent is a really good example. A lot of people buy a new tent, put it in their car, and then try to set it up for the first time when they actually get out camping. That is not a good habit to get into. So take some time at home, whether it's in your living room, at a park, in your backyard, to set up your gear, practice setting it up, taking it down, learning how to store it properly and take care of it. That way your gear will last you for a long time and then you don't have any of the stress or frustration that comes with trying to set something up brand new for the first time. The next mistake that I see a lot of new campers make is picking a bad campsite. Now, believe it or not, there's actually a lot that I think about and that I consider when I'm choosing a good campsite. If you are going to a campground, there are usually designated areas where you park your car and where you pitch your tent. And so you're, you're not really choosing the site. But if you're going dispersed camping, which is what I'm doing right now, where I'm not at a campground that has specific spots, there are a lot of things that I'm thinking about when I'm choosing where I want to pitch my tent. So I'm going to run through a few of them here. Here. The first one is I'm going to look for a spot that has been previously used and usually you can tell there's a rock ring fire pit and there's usually a spot where you can tell other people have pitched their tent. You know, it's kind of cleared off from any big rocks or sticks. It's flat and you can just tell other people have been there. So that's a good indication that that might be a good spot. I also want the ground to be somewhat firm. I don't want to be pitching my tent on any sort of wet, squishy marshland, right? So a nice, firm, dry ground is ideal. I also want to look around and figure out, you know, if it were to dump rain, where is that rain going to flow? Where is that rain going to pool? Uh, this is really crucial. As you probably already know, I live in Utah and I camp so much in Southern Utah and that rocky desert landscape does not absorb water well. So that all that rainwater will run down to these washes and even create flash floods. So that's really serious stuff that you need to be aware of when you're desert camping. But in general, you just don't wanna be pitching your tent in washes or drainage areas. I also like to consider sun exposure and how the sun is going to move throughout the day. Will I have shade? When will the sun hit my tent? So in the colder months, I want the sun to hit my tent like immediately, right? But in the middle of the summer, I want my tent to be more shaded so that it stays nice and cool, especially in the morning. Cause once that sun hits a tent in like the hot summer months, it heats up so fast. So maybe I want to position my tent in a way that I have a little bit of shade in those morning hours. But like I said, in the winter, I kind of want the exact opposite. <laughs> the last thing that I want to mention here is just looking up for any standing dead trees or branches that could potentially fall on your tent. These are are sometimes called widow makers. You do not want a tree to fall on your tent while you're trying to just peacefully sleep here at night, right? So this is something that's really important to consider and take in when you arrive. Now, these are just a few things that I'm considering when choosing a good campsite. I think I might make an entire dedicated video to this showing you some good examples. So if you want to see that, make sure to comment below with good campsite so that I know you got this far and that you're interested in that other video. Honestly, a lot of this good campsite stuff can be boiled down to situational awareness and simply looking around when you arrive. Situational awareness is crucial in really any endeavor in life, but especially when you're out camping, when you arrive, don't pinch your tent right away. Take a moment to walk around, look around you, assess 
the trees and the wind and the sun and where potential rain will, will go, right? You want to take in the landscape and then use that information to make better decisions. So situational awareness is really important here. The next mistake that new campers make is not packing appropriately for the weather, the climate, and the elevation of where you're going. So of course you want to get a good weather report, but sometimes those are not very accurate, especially if you're going somewhere more remote, there might not even be a weather station in that area. So you want to be packing for a wide range of temperatures and always being prepared in case, you know, doesn't say it's going to rain, but what if it rains, right? You want to kind of be prepared for that. So I have a whole video on car camping clothing, which I will link to below it dives deep into all of the different, you know, categories of clothing that you want to be considering. But in general, you want to be packing in layers. Now you're likely going to be experiencing quite a range of temperatures between the night and the day. And you want to ask yourself, how am I going to be able to adapt if the weather changes? How will I adapt if it's colder than I expect, if it's hotter than I expect, if it rains and I'm not expecting it? So kind of thinking through not only the expected, but the unexpected weather conditions. Another thing, like I said, to consider is the elevation. If you're getting weather reports for down in town, but you're actually camping, even if it's just a few miles up into the mountains and you climb a couple thousand feet, that's going to be a different weather situation up there, even though it's not that far from town town where you might be getting your weather. So you want to be thinking about these things as you're packing and making sure that you can adapt. The last thing I want to mention is do not worry about overpacking. I know <laughs> there might be some people out there who will like shame you for overpacking. Um, maybe if you're backpacking and you can't carry your weight and you put yourself and your group at risk for injuries and just slowing everyone down, like maybe, okay, we need to talk about how much you're bringing. But when you're car camping and you're new to car camping, especially, you don't have that experience. And so it is completely normal to overpack and sit there at home and be like, do I need this? Do I not? Like, am I going to need this? I'd rather you overpack. If you have room in your car, <laughs> you're driving yourself up to a campsite, right? I'd rather you overpack and learn what it is that you do need and don't need. And then you're going to learn through experience. So I'm not going to shame you for overpacking, but I do want you to assess the climate, the elevation and the weather and try your best to make good informed decisions that will allow you most importantly to adapt to changing weather conditions. So that's the key point here. <laughs> the next mistake that I see quite often is not storing your food properly. And that also includes your trash because your trash has a scent to it. You want to make sure that you're always storing that stuff well, even if you're at the campsite. So how you store your food will depend on where you're going. You want to make sure before your trip that you're looking up any of the local food storage regulations for the area that you're camping. If you're in bear country, there might be extra precautions that you need to take in order to secure your food. Some campgrounds even have little lockers that you put your food in at night that are bear proof. So you want Want to know all this stuff going into it so that you can make sure you protect your food and don't give any animals any food rewards. I, for example, am out where I'm not concerned about bears. I am mainly concerned about smaller critters like mice, squirrels, birds, uh, that kind of stuff getting into my food. And so I use these clear plastic bins that I've talked about a bunch that clip shut and then I lock that in my car at night and that is sufficient for this particular area. But again, you have to really check on where you're going and make sure you're aware of the animals in the area. Another thing to think about is if you are in a popular camping area, whether you're dispersed camping or at a campground, if you're somewhere that sees a lot of campers, those animals are not shy. I am constantly shocked at how like aggressive they are at going after food even if I'm right next to it. I think that you should really think about your food storage at home before you actually head out so that you don't have a million grocery bags like floating around your camp table, right? So I have the food bin and then I also have my cooler and that's sort of how I keep things organized for this particular area and most of the places that I camp here in Utah. And again, check on those local regulations because things might be different depending on where you're camping. Oh, and this hopefully goes without saying, but you do not ever, 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 ever want to be storing food in your tent. Okay. So there you go. There should be no food around your tent. You shouldn't be snacking in your tent, eating a little granola bar in there. No, no, no. 
<laughs> food is eaten away from the tent and stored away from the tent because again all that stuff has a scent and it can attract animals so no food in the tent the next mistake is wearing really nice clothing that gets ruined around the campfire so this really nice fire pit i'm gonna hang out around that tonight cook some dinner and just relax and sometimes when you have a fire going there's little like sparks or embers that can kind of pop out and hit your clothing and burn a hole through your clothing especially if you're wearing down or fleece it'll burn a hole really quickly sometimes if there's some sap in the wood that will sort of pop as well when it gets hot so you don't want to wear your super nice clothing like if you have a really nice patagonia jacket or something i wouldn't wear that around the campfire because that is a quick way to ruin it so i have camp clothes you actually if you watch a bunch of my videos you're probably like does she have any other clothes because I wear the same stuff all the time when I go camping because I don't care if it gets ruined. And so it's just kind of freeing and really nice. But you want to find things that are both functional and also you don't mind ruining. And we are back where we started for the final mistake that new campers make. And this is a very simple one, one I talk about all the time, but they fail to plan and organize for their trip. So this is a simple one to remedy and it starts with a good plan at home. I feel like a broken record because I talk about this so much on my channel. If you take a little bit of time at home, like we've already kind of talked about throughout this video and you plan for your trip, you look up that weather, you take the time to practice using your gear and learning how to store it and all that stuff, it will just create such a more enjoyable trip when you're out there. And so I think the mistake is really just buying a bunch of gear because you want to get into it, throwing it in the car, and then kind of just winging it. <laughs> that generally doesn't work out great. So creating a good plan at home, the who, what, when, and where, leaving all that information with several people back at home. This is a really important safety habit to get into. It's something I talk about a ton on my channel because it's so dang simple to do. A lot of the friction and stress and discomfort that people sometimes experience when they're camping can be eliminated or reduced by just some good planning and some organization at the start. I have tons of other resources and videos on this channel for that topic. I will link to it in the description below. And with that, I will leave you because it is starting to get cold. So I gotta go layer up and start cooking some dinner. But I hope you like this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you've made some of these mistakes, be nice to yourself. You're learning. We all made mistakes. And so you can learn from it and then make better decisions and implement better systems and organization next time. And you'll have way more fun. <laughs> if you like this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I got tons of camping and outdoor content for you here. So I'd love to see you in another video.